Hello chemists and welcome back to Bale's Chemistry. In this episode, we're going to look at how to calculate the values needed in a back titration. This is AQA topic 1.2 and is on papers 1 and 2 of your final exams. There are a variety of different reasons to carry out a back titration. For example, when you want to calculate the percentage purity of an insoluble compound, when the end point of titration would be a bit difficult to see, the reaction is really very slow, or when you want to work out the amount of water attached to a compound in its hydrated state. Percentage purity and water crystallization are more common in your final exams. So let's look at how we go about carrying out a back titration. First of all, we're going to do a neutralization reaction, where we take our sample and we react it with an acid to neutralize it. We'll have some acid left over and then we'll measure the amount of this acid using a titration. Once we've got that value, we'll calculate how much acid actually reacted. And then we'll use that value to calculate the moles of the original substance. So first off, we'll calculate our moles of the starting acid. This will be made up from stock solution and it's important that it's very accurate. It must also be in excess so that there'll be some acid left over after the reaction. We'll then carry out our neutralization reaction and then we'll measure the unreacted moles of acid using a titration. All that's left to do then is to calculate the number of moles of acid that reacted and we do this by subtracting the unreacted moles from the starting moles. If you're finding this video useful, I'd really appreciate if you'd hit the thumbs up below. Likes help grow the channel, but they also let me know that you're finding the videos useful. So like always, we're going to put this process into practice by having a look at an example question. So 2.6 gram sample of calcium carbonate is reacted with 50 centimeters cubed of one mole per decimeter cubed HCl. The remaining HCl was made up to 250 centimeters cubed in a volumetric flask. 25 centimeters cubed of this solution was neutralized with 20 centimeters cubed of 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed sodium hydroxide calculate the percentage purity of this sample. This is a really complicated, there's lots of values in there and there's lots of processes being described. So I think it's best to think about what's actually happening in the question. First then, our sample of calcium carbonate is being reacted with 50 centimeters cubed of hydrochloric acid. After that reaction, the, all of that is added to a volumetric flask and made up to 250 centimeters cubed using deionized water. 25 centimeters cubed of that sample is taken out of the volumetric flask and then titrated against sodium hydroxide. This will allow the number of moles in that sample to be calculated. So that's the process, but in terms of the calculations, what are we going to need to do? First off, we're going to calculate the starting moles of the acid. Second, we're going to measure the amount of unreacted acid using a titration. Then we're going to calculate how much acid is reacted. And then finally, we're going to calculate the moles of the starting substance. So breaking that down then, first off, we're going to calculate the starting moles of the acid. To do this, we use the equation number of moles equals volume times concentration. We've got 50 centimeters cubed of one mole per decimeter cubed hydrochloric acid, and that gives us 0.05 moles. In the second step, we're going to measure the amount of unreacted acid. To do this, we'll start off by calculating the number of moles of sodium hydroxide used in the titration. Number of moles equals volume times concentration, and we've got 20 centimeters cubed of 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed sodium hydroxide, which gives us 2 times 10 to the minus 3 moles. We know the number of moles of sodium hydroxide will equal the moles of HCl. So we've now measured the number of moles in our 250 centimeter cubed sample. So we now must scale this up for the whole 250 centimeters cubed in our volumetric flask. And we do this by multiplying it by 10. This is a really easy step to miss in exams, so be careful. In step three, we need to calculate the number of moles of HCl that reacted. To do this, we take the starting moles and take away the remaining moles to leave us with 0.03 moles. In the final step, we take the reacting moles of HCl and look at the chemical reaction to calculate the number of moles of calcium carbonate. In this case, it's two to one, so we divide our number of moles of HCl by two. This is essentially where the back titration ends, but we usually have to make out one last calculation. And in this question, we're gonna to have to calculate percentage purity. To calculate percentage purity, we must first convert our number of moles of calcium carbonate to a mass in grams. To do this, we'll use number of moles times MR equals mass, and we'll put in our numbers to get 1.5 grams of calcium carbonate. We'll then divide this mass of calcium carbonate by the mass of the original sample and multiply it by 100 to end up with 57.7%. So to summarize then, we often see exam questions where we're asked to calculate percentage purity or water of crystallization using a back titration. To start with, then you must calculate the moles of excess acid. You're then gonna measure the moles of unreacted using a titration. Don't forget to scale up your values if you're using a sample from a volumetric flask. Calculate your moles of reacted and then use this value to calculate the moles of your unknown. Thanks chemists for watching this video on back titrations. Click on the left for more videos on the amount of substance or click on my logo to make sure you subscribe to the channel.